Hello all. In this video, we will look at the motivation behind convex optimization. So why is convex optimization so special? An optimization problem is usually written in this way. So minimize f0 of x subject to a constraint which is of the form fi of x less than equal to 0. Right. So here f0 of x is the objective while fi of x is the constraint and there could be many such constraints so i is equal to 1 to let's say m. The optimization variable is x so x could be for example a vector in rn so it could be an n cross 1 vector. Uh, the constraints could also be equality constraints. So these are inequality constraints. The constraints could also be of the form fi of x equal to 0 for some i. Right? So these are equality constraints. So what is a convex function? So very roughly a convex function which is a scalar function would look something like this. Right, and a non convex function which is not convex might look something like this. Now it turns out that convex functions are easy to optimize over. The reason for that is that convex functions have several mathematical properties which allow us to develop algorithms which are guaranteed to converge. So these algorithms are iterative algorithms. They run uh, one iteration after another and there is a guarantee that after certain number of iterations the solution will be very close to the optimum and we can precisely characterize how close it will be to the optimum. So this property means that the algorithms are predictable when you use the algorithm it is predictable what is going to happen and this is very useful uh, property in practice. So let us take a look at some optimization problems which are also convex. So for instance consider the least squares problem. I am sure that you have seen this problem before. So the least squares problem looks like this. x star is equal to r min over x and then there is a norm of ax minus b. right? So the least squares problem looks like this. The argmin means that I am picking the x that minimizes this quantity and I am calling that x star. Note that here uh, this norm square can also be written as ax minus b transpose ax minus b. Right? So just note that uh, here uh, x is, so let's say that x is in Rn and b is in rm so therefore a is a matrix in rm cross n so this notation means that it is a matrix whose entries are real and they are it's a matrix of size m cross n so how to solve the least squares problem well it depends on what m and n are and what the properties of a are for instance, the easiest case is when n is equal to m. So if n is equal to m and a inverse exists, if a inverse exists, so this is one case, then we already know that x star is equal to a inverse b. Right? So when x star is equal to a inverse b, ax minus ax star minus b norm square will be 0. Note that norm square is always non-negative. So a inverse b 
gives us a value which is zero, which means that it is also optimum. And in case that uh, n is not equal to m, then the solution can be calculated using the pseudo inverse. For instance, it may be possible to write the solution to the least squares problem as x star equal to a transpose a inverse times a transpose b. Now this formula can be applied if a transpose a inverse exists. And if a transpose a is not invertible, then you have to use some other formula, right? So there are like various cases in which this least squares problem can be solved. And here, in fact, uh, it can be solved in closed form, which means that there is a formula which allows us to calculate it. But that's not always uh, necessary. So, and uh, the least squares problem, like it is a well studied problem. For example, if you use uh, MATLAB software, so suppose you are using MATLAB, then you can solve the least squares problem by this command a backslash b, right? And another another command is there in MATLAB, which is that ls cove of a comma b, right? So both commands can similarly be used to solve least squares problem. Similarly, there are like very basic commands available in all uh, other scripting languages like Python also similar commands are there. Right, so this is the least squares problem which has been well studied. Let's look at another example which is the linear programming problem. So the linear programming problem looks like this. We are minimizing C transpose X subject to the constraint AX less than equal to B. Right, so this is another way of writing lots of constraints in a single uh, using this compact notation. So what does this mean? This means that AX, note that AX and B are both vectors. So AX and B are both vectors. So B is, let's say in R M and X is in R N, right? And similarly A is M cross N uh, matrix, then this can be written as a1 transpose x less than equal to b1, a2 transpose x less than equal to b2 and this goes on till bm. So am transpose x is less than equal to bm. So a1, a2, am are the uh, rows of a. a1 transpose, a2 transpose, am transpose are the rows of a. So here a is of the form a1 transpose, a2 transpose and so on till am transpose, right? So these are rows of a. Uh, another way of writing this, by the way, is that you can say that a i j x j is less than equal to b i, right? So here i is from 1 to m and this summation j is from 1 to n right so a i j is the i j th entry of a so you say that a i j is the i j th entry of a which is m cross n matrix so what is the complexity of solving these two problems we have seen two problems first is the least squares problem second is the linear programming problem so how complex it is to solve them in theoretical terms we try to identify the complexity of solving these problems almost close to optimally by specifying the number of computations, uh, basically fundamental computations. Think of it as, it as fundamental operations like addition, division, multiplication, right? those kinds of operations. So that is the total number that is required to solve this problem so that it is very close to optimum that is the number that is that we call complexity so the complexity of solving both of these problems the least squares problem as the as well as the linear programming problem is so the complexity of solving both of these problems is order m n square right remember that x was in rn so and m was the number of constraints 
in the linear programming case right so the complexity is order m n square whenever m is greater than n right so this is something that is typical of many many convex problems so roughly convex problems whenever you have a convex problem linear programming and least squares are examples of convex problems roughly for convex problems the complexity is proportional to order n cube right so this is a convex problem of size n so by size i mean let's say the larger of the number of variables and the number of constraints so if the size is n then the complexity of solving is approximately order n cube so this is the key advantage of convex optimization problems similar to least squares and linear programming they have a complexity which is approximately order n cube and it can of course be reduced in some cases there are some special structure of the problem which can be utilized and complexity can be reduced in some cases but in the worst possible case it is always order n cube so you can't be worse than this so complexity cannot be greater than this this order n cube notation means that the number of operations right the number of operations you can think of them as fundamental operations addition subtraction division multiplication is less than equal to some constant times order n cube so the constant does not depend on n some constant that may depend for example on how accurate the solution is times n cube and it would depend this constant by the way depends on lots of things like the problem structure and so on right but the dependence on n is always order n cube or lower this is in contrast with this is in contrast with tip general optimization problems so general optimization problems so general optimization problems means which are not necessarily convex they could be anything they could be integer programming problems general optimization problems have a complexity which could be as high as order e raised to the power n right so constant times e raised to the power n note that e raised to the power n is much much larger than or n cube so e raised to the power n is typically much much larger than n cube for large n so for example you can just check you know if n is 10 10 cube is 1000 but e raised to the power 10 would be much larger and similarly as you increase n tends to infinity e raised to power n increases at exponential rate while n cube is just a polynomial in n so this is the key advantage of convex optimization problems which is that most problems of a size which is approximately n can be solved in the worst case with complexity order n cube this is not true for all convex optimization problems they have to have a certain structure then only we can solve it with this complexity so most problems however in practice have that structure and that's why we study them and this is much better than the general case where the complexity is much higher so that is all for this video i hope i have motivated the usefulness of convex optimization in practice so in practice all these problems which are arising can be solved with low complexity and that is good news for us so that's all for this video and uh, we will continue with the notation in and the basics of linear algebra in the next video